Hello and uh, welcome back to a, another quick video on improving your production skills. Um, today we're going to look at uh, song building. Okay, so how to build a bit of tension between your two sections. Uh, if you're working club music, obviously that would be your uh, build up and your drop uh, if you're working from more traditional kind of pop or hybrid music then you might be looking at verse chorus but same principles apply cool this is a pretty simple uh, technique that you can use and we're going to take advantage of the auto filter here and we're going to drop this on the master track okay now there are a few different uh, schools of thought about uh, processing on the master track um, the traditional was it's you shouldn't really do any additional processing here uh, kind of modern production uses some of uh they basically throw the rules out the window on this one, so you can you can try it here. Cool. We're actually going to use two filters here. You could apply this with EQs. I'm going to use filters here because it's nice and simple. We're going to set one to a low pass and one to a high pass filter. Cool. All right, and what we're going to do here is I've built a simple, uh, just basic, you know, four bar loop or three three bar section just for the point of illustrating. Okay, and this is just how we can drive a bit more tension out of your section. So let's have a quick listen. Uh, this is our build up and into our drop or our one bar loop. Here. Cool. All right. So pretty cool, pretty simple. I haven't really mixed this. I just kind of threw it together for the point of this exercise. Right now, we've already got some parts in there arrangement-wise that are driving the track forward. So it's your build-ups, your snare rolls, uh, little vocals, sort of turnaround, stuff like that. So those things do need to be in place for this to kind of work. Uh, you can't just do it on a drum loop and expect it to have the same results. So arrangement first. This is an additional production technique on top. Cool. So we're going to activate our auto filters. Okay, we're going to activate our auto filters and we're going to look at both examples. So the first one, we're just going to drive all of the filter out as we build up for our track. So just click your automation. If you can't see this curve on your project, use this button up here. This is our automation activation section. This is in Ableton 11, I think. I think 10 has it as well. I can't remember. I've been on 11 for too long now. Um, and we're going to activate a node here. We're going to bring this up to about 1K and we're going to drop this back down. So what's going to happen is as we play our track, it's going to go along and follow this curve here like so. Um, I might go to here and let the vocal here. So let's just hear what that sounds like. I'll turn it on and off. I'll we'll play it with and then without. Cool. Now it's obviously extreme examples, just like all the videos we do here, just so for the new people in the back, um, it means they can kind of really get a hear of what's happening. Um, you will have to feather this in to make it work. So without it, Right, vice versa, you could try the other way, which would be using this section here, and we would be fading in all of our track as well. Cool. Or you can use a combination of both. This is really useful for build ups, but it's also really useful if you're moving out of a section. So, if you've got your drop section, you're moving into uh, your second breakdown, which is a challenge for some people. Using these kind of filter options can really kind of work to your advantage. Um, cool. Try those out. Uh, automated filter on your master track. Um, enjoy. Okay. Just one quick caveat in terms of workflow. This will just make your life a bit easier. Typically, when I'm doing this, I would have, I would group all of my kind of writing tracks or my, my pre master kind of stuff into one channel and then I would have all my coloration or all my audio effects in a different okay that just stops you getting confused because you like one makes stuff louder and kind of does all the processing so you can hear what's going to sound like in the project and one's more of a creative tool like hey I want this effect to kind of drop in now like a DJ mixer I suppose um, cool uh, apart from that have music making and I'll see you in the next video